Trivia. Welcome to It's Only TV, but I like it, the brand new panel game about television, the greatest invention of the 20th century, apart, of course, from Michael Barrymore's marriage. <laughs> if anyone deserves a decent quiz, it's television. Hopefully, one day, it will get it. But first, let me introduce you to the teams. Captaining the team on my left, he's delightful, he's de-lovely, he's de-available. Please welcome Jack D. <laughs> star of Men Behaving Badly, who this year is going to be playing a transsexual, a role which will require him to put his usual parts behind him, quite literally. <laughs> Please welcome Neil Morrissey. <laughs> and completing the team, we have an actor who put dodgy Cockney car dealers on the map as Boise from Only Fools and Horses. He also once played a villain on Doctor Who, who was so convincing that even Tom Baker hid behind the sofa. Please welcome John Chappell. <laughs> Captaining the opposition, for whom he has batted for most of his adult life, Mr. Julian. <laughs> With Julian as the star of the award-winning Cold Feet, where in one scene she had to give birth. At the recording, she had 70 men on ladders poking cameras between her legs. She should have gone private and done it on Channel 5. Please welcome... <laughs> And finally, the nation's favourite Windsor, and spookily, on EastEnders, the mother with the embarrassingly baldy sons who can't hold down a marriage. Yes, <laughs> lovely Babs, as I'm sure many people have said to you. It is, of course, <laughs> Barbara Windsor. <laughs> Our first round is based on rumour, trivia and downright invention. It's a round that cuts to the chase with a glaring expose of various notorious TV embarrassments, such as Blue Peter's Elephant, Parkinson's Emu, and Debbie McGee's Paul Daniels. <laughs> Each team will be shown three TV clips, which are clues to infamous moments of British television. Their task is to find the story that links them. So, Jack's team, here's your trio of clues. The ingredients are Klaus von Bülow, Brian Kant, and a gynaecologist. Mr. von Bülow spent 24 years in England without receiving any public attention. Now in America, he is, to his regret, a major personality. Once, a long time ago, when winter was nearly over and spring had nearly begun, all the birds were busy starting to build their nests. This is the womb, and this is the right fallopian tube, this is the left fallopian tube, and these two are the two ovaries. Oh. You're like a little pink mouse, doesn't it? <laughs> like a strange pink thing holding two carpets. <laughs> I think I've got Klaus von Bühler. I'm trying to think of a connection between Brian Kant and a gynaecologist. Well, um, Klaus von Bühler... <laughs> well, look, Klaus von cool. Bühler allegedly murdered his wife, didn't he, in, Am in America? Something like yeah. that. Well, um, Brian Kant allegedly murdered children's TV. <laughs> Great Britain, and, and allegedly it's murder to go to a, a gynaecologist. So yeah. I'm like, I don't yeah. know. Would you yeah. like me to? Do <laughs> well, these days I've got to be grateful, and I don't. <laughs> if one of those doctors who isn't really a doctor just pretends to be for a laugh. Oh yeah, loads. Yeah, because I've done it loads of times. <laughs> Oh, it was you, was well, it? <laughs> the best way to take someone's temperature is not to use a thermometer, just use your finger and guess. Oh. <laughs> is there a, some sort of common link in the dib dib dob department? I don't know what sort of language you're talking. <laughs> dib dib dob? Well, is... he's addressed as a boy scout. Is that, you see, I didn't realise that. Gynaecology mm -hmm. is sort of dib dib dobbing. <laughs> and yeah. it sounds German. <laughs> I really so wish I could say you were right. That would be so lovely. Um, no uh, point. No point at all, but, but dib dib dobbing and gynaecology have never been linked before, I believe. I'm One moment. Yes. Faye. Ah. Oh. Whoever you are. <laughs> Anything to say at this juncture? Um, no. Uh, apart from, you used to have your own show, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> Is 
this is somebody else who connects the three of them. There is so a connecting link, it may well be a person indeed. Because I think yeah. Klaus von Bülow, what, didn't uh, Jeremy Irons do a film? Yeah, uh, didn't he play Von Bueller? Reversal of Fortune. But I don't know what the other connections are. Is there another? Connection? Yeah. Well, um, Brian Kant, who's on Play Away, yeah. um, Jeremy Irons used to actually be um, one of the guys, one of the presenters of Play Away as well. He also, and he yeah. also played a gynaecologist in Dead Ringer. So which you is with Jeremy Irons? Irons? Yeah, Jeremy Irons. our answer is Jeremy Irons. I think. You are correct. The answer is Jeremy yeah. Irons. <laughs> The connection is, of course, Jeremy Irons, the name that's always mentioned after the words Alan Rickman is busy. In a later, <laughs> more celebrated part of his career, Irons played both Klaus von Bülow and a pair of twin gynaecologists, or Dib Dib Dobbers, as I believe him out <laughs> Bursby Lost in the meantime, however, has been the musical talent he carefully honed in his playaway years. Bustling down the street in the morning. In the morning. Well, the bus might be gone. Might be gone. Do you hear the breeze through the leaves in the trees? And do you wonder where the wind is coming from? There is with a, with a young ju Dame Judy Dench, I believe. <laughs> One for Julian's team now. Can you piece together the incident that connects Matt Bianco, some merchant bankers, and Mike Reed? I get up. I get up. Get out of your legs in bed Before I count to three Step two and baby However hard times are for brokers, they're not risking their own money. But there are men on the stock market who do, the jobbers. We're doing a new series of Superstore which starts at the end of September, and this one runs to April, and the John Betjeman musical, in which I put music to his poems, and where we're hoping to uh, put it on the stage late autumn. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I don't feel well. You could use them all to delay orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know where banker comes in. It might expression. be a rhyming slang. <laughs> <laughs> might it be? <laughs> well, you know, that is, he's on the right track. Merchant banker. Yeah. Rhyming slang. Having a swift right, okay. merchant bank. Yeah. <laughs> when he was on Saturday's Superstore, Matt yeah. Bianco, someone phoned up and used the W word. <gasps> Let's see if he's right. Hi. Right, and uh, Simon Roberts on the line. Hello, Simon. Hello. You're through to Matt Bianco. Hello, Matt Bianco. Oh, hey, hey, Simon. You're a bunch of wankers. Hello? <laughs> 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 okay. Face, uh, oh, bless. His face does fall, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Matt Bianco there, famously being called a bunch of wankers on Saturday Superstore. Matt Bianco would have sued, but of course, it was true. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of round one, we find that Julian's team have a magnificent three points, and Jack's team are equal with three points. <laughs> You know, I think it was Huey Green who once said, Our secret is safe, Mrs. Yates. <laughs> Huey is famously reputed to have enjoyed the fruits of more than 4,000 women, which brings a whole new meaning to the word clapometer. <laughs> in our next round, Opportunity Knockers, we're going to look back at some of the acts <coughs> who starred in top TV talent shows of yesteryear and ask the teams here which one is still working in this business we call show. Huey, of course, isn't. He's dead. And I mean that most sincerely. <laughs> Your first turn is called the Jimmy Crawford Blend. They appeared on New Faces in 1978. <laughs> Sounding nothing like the theme of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Although it did look to me like the bad and the ugly turned up with the good. <laughs> okay, act number two is the comedian who appeared on Opportunity Knox in 1978. He is unmistakably Dennis Morn. Actually, I came in here today and the lady came up to me. She said, Excuse the young man, but are you nervous at all about appearing here tonight in front of all these wonderful people? I says, Me, nervous, not at all. She says, Well, in that case, then, what are you doing in the ladies? <laughs> But I've had a problem getting here tonight. I came in my car. Now, I call my car flattery because it never gets me anywhere. Please yourself. 
<laughs> and your final act is an attractive three-piece who put the F into folk music. They debuted on New Faces in 1973. Oh. It is, of course, Dry Ginger. Oh, so who is still working and shortly to embark on a tour of Scandinavia? Is it the smooth, mellow-tasting Jimmy Crawford blend? Is it the trailblazing Dennis Morn, a comedian who was average 10 years before his time, or is it Dry Ginger, the look-alike millennium suicide cult? As I get their theatrical paper at the stage, mm -hmm. <laughs> sure recently, I've seen Jimmy's name up, Jimmy Crawford. So you think it's Jimmy Crawford? Yeah. Does good. he still perform with his legs wide apart like that? <laughs> I've also seen Jimmy Crawford, or at least his photograph, in every barbershop window I've ever been to. <laughs> I so think it could be it could be just Jimmy Crawford's hips that are still in <laughs> That's right. He's, uh, I think he actually probably does that so that deaf people can realise how talented he is as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dennis um, Dennis Morn looks like a young Paul Merton to me. Oh yes, yeah. Do you think he became Paul Merton? He does, yeah. No, not, not with that material. Oh. No. <laughs> So what do you think? Who's going who's to give me what a big suggestion? We're fairly sure that what? Dry Ginger would have thought better of it by now. <laughs> <laughs> Packed up their doilies and gone... <laughs> the, uh, the guy it's on the... It's a thing to name your band after a type of pubic hair, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Dry Ginger, it's a type I know of. <laughs> You just have seen it. Bad, no, they. they yeah, have, you, have you got a collection or something? Is this what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Saving them. No, stuck around the, the stuck around the door frame of the bedroom wall. Yeah. That's where they get caught as they run out. <laughs> this is a classy show. It's got to be. <laughs> we think. Um, well, we think yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, don't we? Yeah, Jimmy yeah, Crawford. Yeah, Jimmy. You think Jimmy yeah, Crawford, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. with or without the blend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that. I think that it was dry ginger. I think they made it big in America, even though they've already got Canadian dry ginger there. <laughs> um, and would it, do we, um, are we agreed on that, or do you think Jimmy no, Crawford? I think dry ginger could have made it through the years. Do you think You're so? hoping, yeah. aren't still, you? Do you think, still still you think they're still working? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in deep shock because uh, <laughs> the one on the right in the glasses is actually me. <laughs> and I'm still working, as you can see, so it's dry ginger. We think dry ginger. Yeah. Dry ginger. Yeah. We'll go for the ginger. Okay, well, the answer is the Jimmy Crawford blend. Wow. Wow. Good. Sadly, Jimmy can't be with us today, because let's face it, we would have liked to have seen that. Here we go. <laughs> but he was able to send us this personal and heartfelt message. Hi, Jonathan. It's a big hello from myself, Jimmy Crawford, to yourself and all the guests on your show. Success. <laughs> How showbiz is that? <laughs> All of which means that Jack's team are limping along behind with three points, but Julian's roared into the lead with six points. <laughs> now we have a round inspired by that classic children's TV series, Blue Peter, best remembered for the bit oh. featuring John, Pete, Val and a washing up bottle. And by the way, I have that video if anyone's interested in it. <laughs> I'm of course referring to the famous Here's One I Made Earlier spot where children were encouraged to make something from various discarded household items. And what fun it was. Instead of receiving a neatly gift-wrapped shop-bought item for Christmas, how much more pleasurable it must have been to get something that your kids had glued together from some old tat from the dustbin. <laughs> We've been assembling the raw materials from which a genuine Blue Peter creation was made and we gave them to our teams shortly before the show. They are a yoghurt carton, some coloured felt, a ping pong ball, a piece of ribbon, a button, some wire, plasticine and some red paint. But what do you reckon Blue Peter's Leslie Judd actually made with them? Okay. Julian? It occurred to me that um, this could be some kind of garrote. Yeah. <laughs> and these would be little mm. blind folds. <laughs> I'm just going. I know where you're going. Julian, yes. have, you, have you ever seen Blue Peter? <laughs> it's, um... Have you ever been in Hello? <laughs> no. Okay, magazine. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> what are you doing, dear? I'm making myself a boyfriend. Uh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, there we are. No, no, no it's a tie. It's a tie. Yeah, yeah, it's a moving on. Yeah. Just a little wind. <laughs> okay. You must be able to do something with that old rubbish. You're in loads of carry on movies. They turned out all right. Uh, <laughs> You can work wonders with it. Don't start. I did have a... <laughs> <laughs> I had oh, a proper I'm just thing. warming up, love. I had a proper thing, Jonathan, about the kind of thing they make on Blue Peter. And it, I, I think it may... I made, I made it. Oh. It's easy to oh. show you. And I think it could be... <coughs> <laughs> you hang it on a tree and you put bird seed in there in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> and the felt is to keep their little feet warm. <laughs> And this is a kind of activity centre for... Uh, <laughs> play around with that. Why did you have time to do that? I knocked it up. Oh, did you? <laughs> Let's have a look. What, what did you guys come up with? You were given exactly the same raw components. John, what did you reckon? Yes, yeah, well, it looks like the contents of Del Boy's pockets to me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, I suppose it could be a sort of a, you know, a, a bit of a, a Jimmy Durante kit. You know, you have to put that, the, undo the wire and strap that to your face with your nose on the end. <laughs> and these bits are like, because it's black and white, yeah. these bits are like eyebrows. <laughs> and, and these bits are, are just... All right, Mr. Yeah, yeah I'll carry on. <laughs> what I think of it is, is it's a child's toy. Um, and the, you have the button on the wire and you do that and it's called oh. chase the button and, and when the... <laughs> and then the child loses an eye and that's your... <laughs> I'm sorry if it doesn't get the kite yeah, mark of your yeah, approval. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, where's the rest of it? Where's the, the felt? The, and the rest of it is... Inside that, that's the, the prize. Yeah. That's... <laughs> I've got a real theory. I think, because there's, there's a lot of tub of red paint there, it's on all the bits of felt. I don't know, I could be wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this looks like it's, it's the basic implements to, to put together to make a model of Zebedee, the magic roundabout character. Oh, well, yeah. So what are you going with? You're going with Jack's um, eye-poking, dangerous, <laughs> imported from Bosnia children's toy. <laughs> You're going with uh, Zebedee? I think Neil is actually a very inspired idea because all the colours are right as well, aren't they? Well, it seems to be the right colour scheme, but who knows? It seems to be the right colour scheme. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're on the right team. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going with your rather beautifully uh, constructed birds leisure centre. Activity centre. <laughs> Let's just see how close you both were. Here is, finally, what Leslie Judd made. It's another toy, but this time quite different from the croquet set that John made last week. Watch very carefully. It's a Zebedee Jack in the Box. And here's yeah. one my children made for me earlier. Oh. <laughs> OK, let's look at the point. So, well, of course, yours was much better constructed, but way off the mark. <laughs> yours was completely wrong, yes, but, but Neil had inspired really guests after the event, so I'm going to give you two points just for construction. Well done. And for being quite charming. <laughs> and I'll give you to two points, despite being an, uh, an ignorant and belligerent savage. <laughs> but because your teammate came up with something quite special. So, two, I'm going to give you both two points for that. So, that brings... Uh, the scores... Jack's guys are still labouring behind with five points. Julian's in the lead still with eight points. <laughs> Our next round is called Channel Hopping. It's based on something that fits snugly in the palm of my hand and provides my wife <laughs> nightly with countless hours of pleasure. <laughs> the remote control. You will notice that Jack is going to have control of our one here. Jack Holt is in the right hand, I believe. Uh, and that Neil and John are now going to make their way round the back to our specially made TV, which is behind me. When Jack presses his remote, everyone but Jack will hear the signature tune to a well-known television show because Jack will be wearing this attractive set of head muffs. <laughs> his teammate's job is to convey to him through the timeless and massively unpopular medium of mime, plus the BBC prop box, the identity of the show in question. Is that clear? So Jack's got his muffs on. <laughs> You have 90 seconds to identify five shows from their theme tunes. Let the channel hopping commence. 
Sooty show. Uh, magic. Animal magic. Yep. Correct. Horses. <laughs> black, black beauty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, call my bluff. Call my bluff. Uh, blind, blind date. Blind date. What's the date, is it? Yeah, that's a date. <laughs> oh, God. Um, uh, skiing. Skiing on... S skiing on Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Shoulder. Oh yeah, that popular show touched my shoulder. Um, what? No, oh, you didn't. But didn't he do well, though, Jenna? Very well done, Andy. You got four out of a possible five. The one you didn't get at the end wasn't Starskin Hutch. It was the Gentle Touch. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, you did that so Very well. Very good. Well. You well did well. Yeah, yeah, that was well done. Julian's teammates are making their way to the TV right now. Okay, Julian, if you'd like to put uh, the muffs on, put your head in the muffs, probably a first for you, and... Uh... <laughs> we have to share the same muffs, do you? You do, they're, they're what we call communal muffs. I'm going to put mine on upside down. I've only had my head in it. <laughs> Okay, everybody, start hopping. <laughs> Royal wedding. <laughs> I have no idea. Next. Uh, Dad's army. Yeah. Who is that girl on the right? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's children's <laughs> Don't know. Next. <laughs> oh, uh, Crown Court? Yes, very good. No, I know what it is. You can stop. <laughs> but I can't remember what it's called. Mystery something. Come on. Virus. Something. <laughs> what? A cheating. I can see your nipple, Barbara Windsor. <laughs> no, but I'd watch that show. Um, <laughs> time's up. You can do that. You didn't do quite sort of. You didn't do bad. Though. You got Dad's Army. You got Crown Court. The one you almost got, uh, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this. Oh please! Oh, okay. I'm well, you know, you know, <laughs> tales of the unexpected because you knew that. Yeah. I could tell yeah. you knew that. But the two you didn't get. The first one was Horse of the Year show. Why was Camilla Parker? What do you mean he knew that? You knew that. I have, I have you know a bond with you. You know it by shouting the name out. That's what the game is. It's not yeah. like I can tell you knew it, even though you were hopelessly mumbling and flapping. <laughs> Ignore him. <laughs> well, either you have a point system or you don't. I we mean, you take it seriously or you don't. I'm taking it seriously, but I'm giving Julian you, just a just Well, a you might as well have given me the gentle touch, because I knew that. <laughs> you thought, obviously, you so did not know the gentle touch. You thought it was Starsky and Hart. <laughs> At least he said fantastically well, he unknown. it was the royal something. wedding. That was the other one. That was the horse of the year, so he thought it was the royal wedding. Let's face it, we've all made that mistake. <laughs> Are you feeling tense, It's Jack? not that important. It's not that important. Can I offer you hand relief? Please. <laughs> you 
So I'm wondering we're going to wind up with that again. It's going to be swallowing and it'll this and that. You don't have to swallow occasionally. <laughs> you know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> if you want to get in show business. <laughs> So I'm giving you that. The, one, the other one you didn't get was Vision On, with oh, the signing right. and the pictures. That was Vision right. On. Right. Totally. It was very well done, I thought. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's three points. Three points for Julian Steen. For Jack, you're in the lead with 14 points. <laughs> for Julian Jack. Have we had every one of them? Yeah. Thank you for the Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's time for our quick fire finale. It's all about those popular catchphrases with which so many of our TV entertainers identify themselves. Even weathermen have their own trademark these days. There's the Bill Giles Wink, the Ian McCaskill, hello, and the Michael Fish failure to predict the hurricane. <laughs> Teams, I'm going to read out the first part of some well-known TV-related expressions and catchphrases. I'd like you to finish them off for me. You've got 90 seconds to complete as many as possible. Okay, here we go. Listen very carefully. I will say this only once. Correct. Uh, you're going to... Uh, piss off. <laughs> Hate me a lot. Yeah, you're getting there. Uh, you're going to like this, not a lot, but you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. There you go. Okay, next one up. Crocodile shoes, crocodile shoes, crocodile uh, shoes. Animal murderer, animal murderer. <laughs> it's not a catchphrase, it's, it's a song, it's a lyric. In, it, 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 well, <laughs> no, because you know, I'm really going to lose it with you. At no indeed. point in any of the episodes did he come on and say the words crocodile shoes three times. What was what was it? Do you think? I think it probably carries on saying crocodile shoes. You're right. Crocodile, it does. Crocodile, 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 I've got to tell you you're wrong, but I'll give you the point anyway, as you probably knew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you see, hold on. But, but wouldn't the world be a nicer place if he had said that? <laughs> Start it till I finish. That's right, there you go, okay. Here we go. Flintstones, meet the Flintstones, they're... Not real. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Something Stone Family, something... The modern Stone Age Family, I'll give you that. Okay. Oh, thank you. Sure, yeah, you'll, you'll be given that one, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Nick was there. Um, oh, man, let me get the first bit out, will you? I'm sure you've heard that before. <laughs> Here we go, Nick was Don't... <laughs> don't imagine for a minute I give a toss about any of you at home. <laughs> don't... Have nightmares. That's right, yeah. very good, very good. And all of that means that the final scores are Julian's team, you have 15 points, but Jack, you're this week's winner with 17 points. <laughs> that was It's Only TV, but I like it. No animals were hurt in the making of this show, although God knows how many gerbils will get through at the after show party. <laughs> we leave you with a treasured moment from tonight's programme the uniquely talented. Jimmy Crawford Blaine. Good night, everybody. And you can put your movie...